Hi, this is Vic. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the arrays in Java. Arrays are the objects that store multiple variables of the same type. Arrays can hold both the primitive types and the object references. So let's take a example to see how they are declared and used. To create an array, first you have to specify what kind of variables it will be holding. So let's create a array of int type int and then you have to give square brackets to tell this is an array of int and then you have to give a reference name to this array let's give it numbers and semicolon so this statement is a valid statement that says a number variable is referencing to array of ints but only using this statement does not actually allocate the memory for the array so what we have to do is give this array a size so numbers equal new int and semicolon and inside of the square brackets in between the square brackets we have to specify the size let's give it a size 5 so these two combined statements provide us a memory location that is sufficient enough to hold five int values that is referenced by numbers so let's allocate some data to this numbers 0 equals 10 now one thing I need to tell here a array of five int start with an index of 0 and goes through 1 2 3 and the last index with a 4 because 0 to 4 is a total of 5 elements. Do remember an array index is always started with a 0 and ends with the size minus 1. That is 4 here. So at the first position I have given a value 10 and let's copy this and paste it 5 4 times. 1, 2, 3, 4 and Alt Shift F to format this and at first position 10 at second uh, a third position and this is the fourth and this is the fifth position so this is the zero index and this is the last index that is the fourth and we'll give 10 20 here uh, 30 40 and 50 so by using these statements what I am doing is allocating a value to each index separately this can be done using a loop to help us speed up the coding process let's comment these out and use our for loop for and i is equal to 0 to 5 less than 5 so it will run from 0 to 4 and terminate at 5 total of 5 times now s out number equals plus numbers and here i so what I have done is given the index as i so in the first iteration it will output the first value and so on so let's shift up 6 to see what we get here you can see we are getting zero value because we have assigned nothing to it and this is the default value and if we assign some value to these numbers let's say we assign some value numbers i equals i plus 10 so this is a good statement so our first number will contain 0 plus 10 is 10 and the second will contain 1 plus 10 is 11 and so on shift f6 to see what we have so the first value is 10 then 11 12 13 and 14 and what we should do while we are coding for something is to separate the assignment part that is the this part from the output part this part so we should always keep in mind to use two different loops let's remove this and put a new for loop here and this is 5 and put it over here so now this loop is implementing our assignment part and this loop is implementing our printing part so shift f6 and we'll get the same result and one more thing i have to tell you here is we can replace this square bracket and put it here now this is a legal statement but for more readability we use 
these square brackets just after the data type so that we know what kind of array we have also we can have a space between this and this is completely right but what is recommended is to put the square brackets after this and giving a size is a must if we don't give a size we get a compile time error because jvm needs to know what size of array you'll be needing to allocate the sufficient memory now one more thing we can have these two statements combine into one let's remove this part and put it over here with an equal sign and this is a single statement that is declaring an array and also allocating the space for five int values and what this combined statement is saying is create an array object that will hold five int values and assign these values to this reference and also set each element to its default value that is zero for an int so let's see if we change the int to a string that is an object type not a primitive type string so here we are having a string array with a size of 5 and change the identifier to str here also and comment these out because we are not needing this and I'll be showing only the default value that str will be containing so this is enough for the purpose and change this to str so shift f6 see these all contains null because string is an object and the default value for an object that is not initialized is a null even when we change this to an integer let's control h and find what string and change it to integer this is the type wrapper and replace all so this has replaced these two and now shift f6 to see and again you can see we are getting an l because this is also an object type and there are also the static arrays that change this to an int and remove this part and let's make a static array static array is defined between these curly braces and let's have some values 10 let's say 20 30 40 and 50 sorry 50 so we have five values here and this is iterating through these five values let's shift f6 and as you are seeing this is an absolutely right way of using an array but this is seldomly used and we mostly use arrays in the way i have shown just before this and the last thing i have skipped the for each loop so this is the right time to show you how a for each loop works because for each loop is designed specifically for the data structures and an array is a data structure so we can use a for each loop here perfectly so we can remove this and let's have a for each loop for e and a tab to have a for each loop and as you can see this also starts with a for and not a for e and the syntax is quite smaller than the for basic for loop now let's s out str now let me tell you what this is oh we have to s out i sorry the array is referenced by str so we have put here the str and strs single iteration value is provided to this variable and this is assigned a data type that str will be returning so for one iteration it will be returning an int shift f6 the result what we are expecting so this is all for the array tutorial part and we'll be seeing the multi-dimensional array in the next tutorial so see you there